Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the first episode of a new podcast on DNO titled Factually Speaking. Factually Speaking actually speaks for itself. In that, that, that's the title of the program. In a sense that it will be focusing on the facts as we discuss various matters, you know, of interest to you as individuals and to the country in general. We will take time to research and to present you with statistical information on the matters that are being discussed, bring you the facts and figures, so that you may go away from this program with an understanding of the matter at hand based on the facts presented. My co-host for this program is Bakasi Marie, and of course, he's going to be a source of information as well as a regular host or co-host of the program. Mark? Welcome yes, to, to uh, thank you. Actually speaking, um, yeah, thank you, Tim, and uh, glad to be here to share some facts with uh, our co-citizens, whether they live in Dominica or they live abroad in the diaspora. Yeah, and as you said, there we hope to do facts on matters that are pertinent to Dominica. There are a pl- plethora of topics out there. To start, that we right. could have, you know, um, mm-hmm. decided to tackle in our first program. But, but why did the crime reach in Dominica? Well, the, the reason we uh, agreed to do the first episode on crime in Dominica is because generally we have this idea in Dominica that Dominica is an extraordinarily safe place, although the Garden of Eden, you might say. Um, but the facts belie that assumption. And that's why we want to start with the, the, the crime situation in Dominica, because crime affects every citizen and every non-citizen, even the visitors to our island, are affected by, by crime. And uh, if we know what the crime situation is, then we are much better able to you know, manage the situation. What are the facts, you know, okay. as far as, as the research as you've done, regarding the crime situation in this okay. country? Well, there are many crimes that uh, our citizens can perpetrate in any country. But the one that is um, indicative of, in my say, failure in the society the most is the level of violence that is taking place within the country. When there is no uprising or civil war, and it's just taking the personal violence, which usually we refer to as murder. So the murder rate is one of those metrics that gives us a good idea as to the level of violence and insecurity that is in the in the country. And um, just to give you a, a, a starting point, starting starting point, the average murder rate per hundred thousand population in the world is six, about six. It varies from year to year, but spins around six. The United States, for example, which we think of as relatively violent, actually its rate of murder is about six murders per 100,000 person, which translates roughly to about 25,000 murders per year. The population is 330 million. Dominica's population, of course, is nowhere at that level, but we also have a high murder rate that is actually much higher generally each year than um, the United States. And we, the figures we have here are from 1999 to 2021. And if we start off with murder, as we said there, we'll see that in 1999, we had six murders. And that gives us a rate of 8.35 murders per 100,000 persons. Obviously, it, it relates to the population and the number of murders. In 2000, which is the beginning of the century, there were two. And the murder rate there was 2.40 per 100,000. Following year, which is 2001, we had only one, which is great news, but could have been better news if uh, the number had been zero, but it, there was one. And the murder rate there was 1.41. So in these two years, 2000 and um, 
2001, our murder rate in Dominica was below the world average by a significant amount. Whereas in 1999, it was above the world average by a relatively small amount as well. It was above. And then we get into 2002, and we have nine murders. And our murder rate then jumps up to 12.79 to 100,000 people. And the, the most, I'd say, murderous year was in 2017 when we had 19 murders, which gave us a murder rate of 27.23, which is quite high according to the world standard, which is about 6. We have 27.23 in 2017. Yeah. And uh, in 2020, it dropped by four murders. So in 2020, we had 20.72 murders per 100,000 people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So our murder rate is actually much higher than we generally think. You know, see your analysis, though, of the figures, I mean, is it based on we have established that they, they, they fluctuated, you know, between 1999 and 2021. 2020, it was yeah. not a steady trend, so right, to speak. Right. Um, but given all of the figures, as a statistician, as an economist, somebody who does yeah, this, yeah. Um, I mean, if you were to analyze those figures, what would be your your, your ultimate assessment? Well, I, I would would you say that, 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 that is indicative right. of... of, of a rising trend, or well, how would you characterize it? A rising trend, mm -hmm. because at the turn of the century, we were at six per uh, hundred thousand. At the, at the at two thousand itself, exactly, we were at um, two point eight per hundred thousand, and then in um, two thousand and one, we were at one, one murder per per for the year which gave us a murder rate of 1.41, 200,000 persons. Um, and then from then on, it started increasing. Okay? And it got to as high as 19 murders in 2017. So I would say, although it's fluctuating, the general trend has been upward. In 2021, it, it was at 9, and I think that's partly to do with the pandemic. It was in 2021, the pandemic was in, you might say, full swing. And we were ordered to stay home and not to be out in public, etc. So there were probably less opportunities for people to get into conflict with each other and get um, in violence. Yeah. Okay. Leading to burden. All right. So, so there's been a trend, you know, yeah. in terms of the increase in, mm -hmm. in the murder rate. Yeah. Um, well, at the same time, however, um, maybe you should mention this there. The next, I might say, grave crime of violence. Well, I was talking to that. I was going to ask yeah. you what other crimes, you know, violent crimes of note, you know, right. that you were able to get well, information. Well, man, the right. manslaughter, um, the crime of manslaughter actually has been quite low in Dominica, meaning to say that the police and the prosecutorial arm of the um, justice system did not persecute many people for manslaughter. Yeah, and many years there were zero manslaughter charges. For those people who are not sure, you know, not everyone is familiar with court terms and so on, right. and the laws, what is manslaughter opposed manslaughter to murder? murder. Yeah. Well, manslaughter implies that you were reckless in causing somebody's death, but it was not your intention to cause the death. For example, you might have been driving at 60 miles per hour uh, or on a piece of road where it's really only safe to drive at 30. You were not intended to kill anybody, but at the reckless speed at which you were driving, you got into an accident with somebody else and you caused his death. So you didn't have uh, what they call uh, a guilty mind, right. but you... There was no intent to, to, yeah. to outright to yeah. go out yeah. and, and, and kill that you person. Were, you were right. negligent, right. you might say, very negligent. 
and that, and also too, we might want to know that a number of cases begin as murder charges, right? Right. And, right. And, uh, right. You know, reduced right. the uh, uh, so right. in the process. Huh? In the process yeah. of the prosecution, prosecution and the trial, etc. Right. Right. Some people might have been charged with murder and they were found guilty of manslaughter. Or they might not have been found not guilty at all of murder because it might have been considered justified homicide. homicide. Yeah. Like defense of yourself or defense of somebody else. Okay, so I interrupted you. I hope yeah. you can be yeah, yeah, yeah. very stuck yeah, yeah. in. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. But um, I, I, there is, there, there is a, 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 number, a number of crimes of violence there that I think we should you know, highlight. And these are crimes that are generally executed against the female population. There are a number of categories there. Rape, indecent assault, unlawful sexual intercourse. Yeah, these are the three. Yes? And what figures do you have? Both, okay. Please. And we will move oh, no. there that in each year, in the period from 1999 to 2001, they were for rape, they were all in the double digits except one year when they were six, which is um, uh, 2018. There were six rapes reported to the police. Oh, and there's another year when they were nine, just one below the double digit. Yeah, but so it, it's relatively high for, um, for the for the female population. I can so see what, that the generally year, the people who are suffer rape. I can see that the year 2000 was the highest. That was 24. Right? Yeah. 24, no, rape cases. 25. Oh, well, it was 2008 then. Right. 25. 25. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, okay. And we should note with these cases there very importantly. Whereas for murder, for example, we can pretty much say these are the number of murders that took place. But with rape, we we'll have to say these are the number of murders that came to the attention of the police. Because there might have been more that were not reported. Yes. Okay. So, what the figures we have there are those that are reported to the police. And then we also have indecent assault, which is even higher than the rape. Yes. Okay, let's, let's go to some of the figures. And yeah. the, um, we had as many as 43, not 43, sorry, 52. Yes. Cases of indecent assault. In one year, right? yeah, um, and if you add, so if you add them abroad, they they, they come to quite a, 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 a fair number of crimes of violence against female population. If you add unlawful sexual intercourse, and I think in this section there on unlawful sexual intercourse, this is a section in which the Child abuse, sexual abuse would be listed on lawful sexual Most of them would be listed in this category. And we notice that we have as many as 27, 42, 35, 43, 65, etc. in one year. And they have been 65. Right. Right. So, so it, it, it's not a, a crime of minor significance. It's a major occurrence in the society, uh, which, you know, we have to try to tackle, you know, to get to get rid of it. Okay, so we'll, we'll come into that. We, we certainly want to look at a certain point in this program as to how we can provide what we need to, to be mindful of and what we need to do as a society. But before that, I think it, it, it's all appropriate, Matt, to talk about what causes crime, you know? From your own, you know, experience, your own research. Well, um, what what have you come? What information have you come across to suggest um, the reasons? You know, uh, why uh, people commit crime. The, the, well, the, the different crimes have different reasons. Right. Uh, for example, the crime of unlawful sexual intercourse. So far as it has it, um, pertains to minor people less than twelve. Um, there is evidence in the literature that the people who do that are suffering from what is known as a paraphilia, which is a big term, medical term, 
Wab or the sexual desire. Um, and one of those, uh, what they call as pedophiles, you say people, and especially whose sexual attraction is directed only towards children below 12 years old. These persons, um, are pedophiles. They, they, they are born like this. So the punishment does not diminish the desire to have sex with children. It's a disease, right? It's, 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 it's a illness, mental yes. illness, right? Yeah. But, but it, the, uh, it's, a mental, it's, it's a mental condition, right? It, 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 more things are great. It's a bit of different. Right. Although, although you say your mind is in your brain, right. but um, there is a, a bit of different there. Um, that, 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 that's a medical, the medical yeah, definition yeah, of the yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. a brain thing. Yes, uh, yeah, it's more brain thing. So similar to psychopathy, you know, right. a, a psychopath is more right. a psychopath. Right. Yes. And he does what he does because he's a psychopath. In a similar way, the person who is a pedophile does what he does because he's born a pedophile. So essentially there's no cure for this, for that. No, person is properly defined as a pedophile, there is no cure, except something which people sometimes say in anger on Facebook or... Castration. Or, yeah, yeah right. which is say castration, right. yes. Uh, and, and some persons in some countries actually come to be castrated either chemically or surgically right. in order to get to rid themselves of the affliction. Because it's not the, the, the persons who are Pedophiles, very pedophiles, are not unaware that what they're doing is not socially acceptable. It, they, are, they are, in a sense, similar to an alcoholic. Those he shouldn't be drunk at night or from the morning when he should be at the room somewhere. No, he knows that. But you passing in front of the shop and see some people, some people they have in a drink. So it's in, and his intention is to have one, and he's there all after, till afternoon, you know? It, it, so it's in, in the same category, and in this case, the only sure way to do that is to pretty much eliminate sexual desire in the person. Oh, okay, Mark, you've just touched on, on you know, crimes committed by people bias, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and that is one, just one of many different types of, of of sexual yeah. uh, offense, right? right? Committed by people against, particularly against but women. It happens against, against, against yeah. males as well. As a, yeah. But it, but it's more common, I think, right. against females. Males against females. Males against, against females, 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 you know? Um, so, so that's one, you know? The, 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 the pedophile, right? But there are other types of, of assault. Indecent assault is one of them, you know? Uh, other sexual offenses. Right. Rape, in rape. Indecent assault, you might say, Another way to describe that would be attempted rape. Okay. Um, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, attempted rape. Um, yeah. the, the, it's, it's just your, it's a way, one of the ways you would you can characterize yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but, but rape itself, yes. you know, all and that's pretty frequent right. as well. Right. Right. Um, so you, you, you mentioned, you know, the, the, the brain, what you refer to as the brain effects, you know, the with, in, in the pedophile, the yeah. yeah. pedophile. But in, in other cases, such as rape, you know, in the sense of assault, um, what some of the, of the triggers? In, 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 in terms of rape, the, the literature suggests that the major trigger is the quest, is question of um, power. It's a, it's a power relationship where I will overpower you and have my way with you. I want to do what I want. So it, it, it it's... Although it's sexual, the, the, the real drive behind it is desire to have power over other persons. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That 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 is basically the main, or essentially the main cause, yeah. okay, or the main trigger. Yeah. You know, for people who commit yeah. commit rape. Okay. Um. There's also, I, I guess, the same thing applies to in this kind of song. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It it it. A man who decides, because he also has greater strength, that he should have his way with the female person, 
whether the female person consents or not. And this is yeah. All right. So we were about to, to tackle the, the some the, other yeah, the, major the, the issues of major the crimes, types of the crime, like, right, the like murder and you know um, robbery and robbery, and shot, okay, property, you know, basically uh, crimes against property. Um, yeah. So we had in. Um, at the beginning of the period there, burglary, which is um, defined as entering any building, whether the door is locked or open, and um, taking things from there. Before we had the burglary laws, which I think you came into, came on the books somewhere in the 1990s, maybe since the well, we had we broke down that kind of um, crime into two categories. There was breaking and entering, and, and then there was simply larceny, which meant that if the door was open and you went in and you took something and you went out, it was considered a, a, somehow a lesser crime than if you actually forced the door or window open in entry, in which case you would be charged for breaking and entering. They dispensed with the distinction between the two kinds of um, if you like from buildings and similar enclosures. So since you enter a place and take something, you are committed a burglar. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that that's so so, so, okay. so, so but what sort of figures you have for, for those burglary yeah. burglaries um I guess the question is, we were spoken about murder, we were spoken about... Burglaries, in the, at the beginning of the century, you see 1999, we had 1,320 burglaries. Okay. And the, the year in which we had the most burglaries was, we had 1,551, that was 1,002. There were 1,551 burglaries. And then there was a steady drop in burglaries reported to the police down to the point where at, in 2021, there were only 409 burglaries reported to the police. Yeah, so it came from almost a thousand less in 2021 than in now. Uh, 2002, 20, yeah, it was a thousand less. So, which brings us to the question of why did burglaries drop continuously until it got to as low as 409? Well, I, I would think for, 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 for the 409, which is, um, in the year 2021, the fact that we were on the, the max state of emergency because of the pandemic and our movements were restricted, the burglars' movements were also restricted, so they were less able to engage in burglary. Yeah, but although we, we noticed that it has been dropping instead. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's the question. This that would be two things. One, the persons who have um, premises, secure the premises better so that it's more difficult for the burglar to get access or burglars are found it not to profit, I believe, might say, to engage in burglary, as well as the, the people who suffer burglary might consider that Although they've lost something, they might consider that the, the, the court process, for example, would involve another expenditure of time and money on their part, which, um, and therefore they, 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 the attitude of not reporting the burglaries, even if they did have, so they might have been not so much a, a drop in the number of burglaries, but a drop in the number of reports about burglaries happening. 
Okay, so in essence, Matt, from what you've been saying, we, we, we should only be concerned about certain banks at this point. Because some of them, like the Bobby Rich, for example, are decreasing so that they don't no longer pose the kind of threat or, or threat to security and stability that, that, they, they, that, that they did some they years ago, ago, right? The year 2000. Yeah. Right. So, so it means at this stage, yeah. we as a country, we, we, we should be concerned based on the, on the statistics about certain crimes, murder being one of them, yeah. sexual offenses Crime against women, right. crimes of violence, right? Against, uh, you mm -hmm. know, being another set. Um, so, no, but, but we haven't talked about, we talked about murder in terms of the statistics, but we haven't talked about what it is that would cause, that drive, uh, right, you know, people murder. to commit murders, right? Not commit murder. Yeah. Well, there, there are a number of things that could be, Driving that, there, there, there is this um, document here that talks about um, crime and violence in the the Americas. Which, by the way, Western Hemisphere, which is say from the United States, Canada, Mexico, down to Argentina, is the most murderous part of the world. Yeah. Um, for example, they they say here. From this um, insight on crime, February 2023, that more than 40 of the most dangerous cities in the world are located in this region, Latin America and the Caribbean, as well as two of the 20 countries with the least peace in the world, according to the Global Peace Index. Despite governments' large spending on security and high imprisonment rates, drug and weapon trafficking, Organized crime and gangs have turned violence into an epidemic that affects the whole region. Solution to this issue seems to be hardly attainable. Which is to say that crime and violence, but, um, not just crime and violence, but violence is associated very much with. The traffic in arms and guns among, I'd say, underworld figures, as well as the traffic in illegal substances, drugs, to, to, be, to be straightforward about it. But the people who engage in this activity, which is, from all appearances, highly profitable, go to any lens to protect their market. And if it means dispatching somebody to the other side of the river, they, they do that. So the, which indicates that there is, if you like, a lot of the crimes that are taking place are crimes that are connected with acquiring economic goods and or services, which probably is tied in to the fact that they Societies in Latin America and the Caribbean, including Dominica, our societies are pretty fractured. We don't have a holistic society. There, there, there are many levels of say, disagreement among groups of people in the society. For example, um, pretty much all Africans who are in the Caribbean here brought here a slave. And now that slavery has ended, a lot of the people of African descent are still pretty close to the bottom of the economic and social ladder. Then the indigenous people who were here, they're in a similar situation. So that there are fissures in the society which lead to people feeling excluded from the benefits of the social order and therefore they engage in these activities, even knowing that um, it's, it's illegal and it's dangerous and they could get killed, they will be willing to do it. Yeah. So I, I, I think the, 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 the different kinds of crime have different reasons. And, and, and the, the, there is a, a number. It is called a, a Gini coefficient, which is to say it's a, it's a number that calculates how unevenly or evenly 
the income and wealth in a society is distributed. And I think in all part of the world, the GD coefficient is pretty high, meaning that the distribution of income is very uneven. So there are large groups of people who have uh, very low incomes and who find it difficult to get jobs in the formal economy and therefore they turn to alternative means of getting sustenance. Yeah, which that's where crime, drugs and guns come in. Because the guns are needed and necessary to facilitate the smuggling and the retention of your well, property, that's how the drug dealers look at it, to, to make sure that they have their product for sale at the market. And they will be willing to you know, take the necessary steps as they see it to protect their financial interests. But Mark, is this always the case then? Particularly in, in, in you know, the case of um, drug trafficking, you know, sale of drugs and so on, that people involved are doing that because they they, they are right, they are underprivileged, they're poor. I mean and the cases in which People get into that with the intention of actually making money. Making money. And yes. it's not yes. because they, they're yeah, that, poor that, necessarily or yeah. they can't survive. Oh, that's so, what I'm but saying. But there's, there's a lot of greed involved in that. Right, right. right. That's what I'm saying. In, in other words, some people feel that they can't make money in the, for lack of a better word, the formal society or this formal economy. Therefore, it is an alternative. And part of the reason, because our societies, in point of fact, are fractured. And they're fractured along racial lines, ethnic lines, and finally, class lines. Yeah. And if, if the, the, the large class of persons are considering that they are slipping back into, you know, in terms of material goods and so on, then they make every effort including illegal efforts to rectify what they consider justice by the society. Yeah. All right. So, so essentially, um, in dealing with matters of crime of that nature, yeah. I mean, those are the things that we need to take into consideration to, yes. to arrive at a yes. final... Yeah. You know, it was of, as, of, as, as a statement I read out there, just says there, we have a very high imprisonment rate, right? yeah. including Dominica, by the way. But that has done nothing to diminish violent crime. It, it just keeps going. But if you had a high imprisonment rate and prison, and imprisonment was a viable solution, then you should have be having violent crime going down rather than going up. Yeah, but, yeah. But, but, but I mean, a different approach, say, perhaps through rehabilitation, yeah. right, in prison, um, is not necessarily going to solve societal issues, okay? In other words, you will still have, you know, the, the, mm -hmm. the divide in society where the fishes that you spoke about, you know, yeah. that where some people are just not as advantaged or are more or less or disadvantage, so to speak. Right. Okay, than others. Right. And this causes this, you know, this divide and the need by those people who are in that disadvantaged position to find ways of surviving or earning, you know, uh, right. income. Right. So, so, so therefore, so, so the, 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 the battle of to me has to be fought into France, right? Mm -hmm. One where you try to ensure that the people who commit crimes can be rehabilitated in such a manner that they can go back into society yes. as better people. Right. But on the other hand, if they go back into society as, you know, better people, you know, mm -hmm. they are and they meet the same conditions. Yeah. You know, that cause them it, to get it, into it, crime in the first more place. Because nothing is going to change, right? Yeah. For them not to get back into it. Right. Yes. So then how do we tackle? Well we have to put resources in the right place. In other words, instead of building more prisons and hiring more guards and so on there, we might use better use some of that money there to have interventions with 
particularly the youth, the youth that are at risk before they get involved with the legal and judicial system. So, so they, they have an alternative and they see a, a different path that's available to them. So, but which means it's not a thing that we're going to solve in a five year election cycle. Yes. So the, the state has to commit to that kind of intervention over a long period of time. Yeah. Twenty four hours. Yes. 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 Rather than yeah. say maybe because here's what happens. It's it's pretty easy when the citizenry are concerned and they're expressing concerns that crimes are happening, they can't get out of their house, they have to stay home, they have at twenty six o'clock, they have to be indoor, etc. Like I'll tell you a joke. One day I went to Trinidad and you know, I went to this person's home. And they have the usual burglar bars all over the, the doors. And they have a TV set that has its own burglar bar. So you have to watch TV through the burglar bars. In other words, the person that's a, 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 a burglar could come into the house and probably burglar other things, right? They were having burglar. They were taking the TV, right? No. The TV is yeah. probably the most valuable uh, um, item in, 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 in the house. Well, the, house. the person who had the house <laughs> thought that that is an item that a burglar would probably want to rent. Yes. So, yes. and he's not going to let him have it easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, he big, built his own burglar bag for, for, the, for the TV. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so, so rehabilitation, you know, um, and, you know, measures to address, the, you know, societal disparities, right? Or economic mm -hmm. disparities and so on. Yeah. Um, but you, you're not saying that, that the prevention, okay, the, uh, the, the uh, punishment for crime, you know, is, mm -hmm. is, is something to be done away with. You're not saying that, right? No, 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 no. Right? You can't do away with it. Right. But I've been taken, you yeah, have to be aware, well, sometimes it, it's a kind of economics you have to do, to say what is more costly. Put the person in prison and treat him as badly as you can while he's in prison. Or put the person in prison and treat him as humanely as you can with the intention that, that when he goes back out, he does not get back in the same life that landed him in prison in the first case. They, 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 it, it's easy if you are a lawmaker to promise the citizenry we will increase the punishment on X, Y, Z crime by a hundred percent. Okay? It's easy. You go to the parliament and you pass the law and it's now the law. But that does nothing. I remember in Trinidad, uh, Mr. Ramesh what was the attorney general. He had five, you know, five, eight members of the dual city gang executed on one day. And the murders in Trinidad didn't stop for a minute. <laughs> if it is at all. But there is a certain mighty satisfaction on the part of the citizenry that the government has done something, but the thing that they've done did not diminish the criminal activity. So, so you know, you're saying there's no merit uh, to the argument yeah. or the case being put forward by people who are advocating for the return of, of, of capital punishment? No. But obviously, capital punishment act does not prevent people from committing murder. Okay. All right. So we we, we continue to punish, but that that, that shouldn't be the 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 only thing. Of the, of the, of the, okay, we have to do. We should be putting more and more resources okay. into what you might call soft activities to prevent. So, so right. I'm getting into a life of crime. So that, that, that's a question I was going to ask you. I mean, it would entail spending a lot more resources, putting a lot more resources in, in, into that activity. Right, well, shifting right. resources, right. you know. Right. It's shifting resources. No, but you continue to punish. I mean, yeah. you may not punish yeah, all, yeah, but yeah, you yeah, still yeah, continue yeah. to have a punitive well, aspect to, you know, to, 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 they, to, to deal with it. There can yeah. be um, punitive aspects. But then you, 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 a young person gets involved in some illegal activity. Well, is it necessary to put him in prison 
Or do you ask him to join a community program and do uh, a thousand hours of community work in, in, in the community? Instead of going to prison, you, you have in fact sanctioned him, but you didn't put him in prison. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but, but in addition to doing the community work, you're also, whatever it is that drives and that program in prison, you come into crime, you also want to tackle that, you know, while he's in prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So you have to be spending more well, money for that as yes, well. But you also have to remember, the, you also have to remember that he has children. And you don't want his children to join to like the family business. So that's where you have to say you have to resources. You have to commit for a long period of time, not, not for a five year program and afterwards it comes to them. That's a, a continuous part of the social activities that happen in the society. Okay, but but do you think though, and I, I'm not, Disagreeing yeah, with what you're proposing, but I'm just looking at the, you know, practical, you know, aspects of that, or practical it is. But everything is, everything is practical if we want to do it. Well, okay, it's, it's, well, 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 how feasible then it is, given our, you know, economic that, circumstances. Yeah, it's our mentality. Yeah, no, no, though. the economic circumstances, and we, we, the mentality, I agree with you. Right. But the economic circumstances where lots of governments are struggling to just, to meet, yeah. you know, their everyday including ours, right? Mm -hmm. Expenses, right? Right. I mean, things could vary from, from you know, from, from time to time, you know? In, in other words, it's not a constant, right? But there are times when, like now, where we're struggling, you know, as a country, to, to, to meet our, our expenses, the government, right? Mm -hmm. our, our, our recurrent expenditure, right? To get enough money for that. Um, that we have to be allocating resources towards what you're proposing. And, yeah, uh, and sure. this is not to say that what you're proposing, sure, proposing, sure, proposing sure. doesn't have merit. Yeah. But, but the question is, um, in making those decisions and prioritizing, um, I mean, what, do, don't you think that that could be a challenge? It could be very challenging well, for any government? Everything is a challenge. Right. Every, every single thing is a challenge. Um, how do you think the government, you know, would be able to, or any government, in, in countries like ours, to be able to undertake something like that um, effectively. Well, things are always difficult. There's never enough money to do everything we want to do. We have to make a choice. Part of the, 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 the choice we have to make is you have to weigh the future and the present. Okay? If we invest in, in the youth if, before he gets to the stage of being within the ambit of the justice system. We can prevent in, in maybe 10, 15 years, these people or some of them from joining into the criminal activity as their way of livelihood and um, a modus operandi, their, 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 their lifestyle, you know? But, but it, it, what we must not do is have the, the short termism. We must commit to a change. It, it, it's like uh, uh, an oil tanker on the sea. It's a big ship. When you've decided to turn the wheel, the ship doesn't turn immediately. It takes a good while after you've turned the wheel for the whole ship to spin around and turn in another direction. And you have to be committed and wait until the ship has turned. If you, if you want, to, want to turn, it's not a speedboat. You want to do that, get a speedboat. Speedboat proper with the speedboat is that can capsize pretty easily and kill you. Yeah. So if yeah. We, if if, that, if you're taking the speedboat approach, that probably is where we are. We want it to happen now, and it, right. we don't put enough resources right. and leave the resources there for long enough time to bear fruit. But but given given uh, mm. our political system, right, and the fact that at the point the very thing that you're advocating against is the very thing that has governed the way we behave, right? Um, in terms of what we prioritize, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Oh, first class the post by the system, this, this um, Westminster by the system, right? Where once we get in there, our priorities are to how can we ensure that we get reelected in the next five years? You know, so it, it seems to me that that you, it, 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 we, we, as you, I think you pointed out sometime earlier on that 
We need to change our mindset, right, as a country. We need to change the way we do yeah. things, right? And not yeah. just with what you're proposing, but the way that we approach everything else, because that is what, that is how our political system is structured. And that is yeah. how our politicians operate. That but, but, we, but, we but, want to but, ensure when we but, get there, the point, we do the things but, that will ensure that we get reelected. The, the point I'm making there is that these structures and ways of thinking, people created them and they do them and they can do otherwise and make a better choice. Because, for example, um, we we're talking about sexual offenses there. Not so long ago, there were an outcry about um, the number of sexual offenses, particularly offenses against um, female children. Um, and the government goes to the parliament and they passed what I would consider a very strict and stiff law of, 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 for, um, to, supposedly to deter sexual offenses. But obviously, as we can see from these figures there and so on, there, that has pretty much done nothing. But so, so what is the government next move? To increase the, the, the penalty? Or, 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 do, or, or, or do something else? Because just the penalty is not creating um, the, the, the kind of society we need. And of course, come back to the numbers here, from this figure here, that we have very high imprisonment rate. The only other thing you, you, you would say that goes beyond imprisonment is simply to um, have capital punishment for practically all crimes. <laughs> That's not a feasible thing. Okay. I, I, I'm with you Matt, on that. Mm. But I just realized that you are advocating a massive shift. shift yeah. Right? You have to in, stop. In, in the way that we right. think, you know, you know, myself, you know, mm -hmm. in the way we do things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's something we probably have need to apply to almost every aspect of our governments mm -hmm. and, and our way of life in this country, not just yeah. to, to crimes, you know? Okay. Well, 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 Mac, I mean, I think we've practically covered, you know, yeah. most of the things that we set out. But I, I think yeah. I, I would just want to bring a, a, a back to the attention of the, our viewers and listeners is that our region of the world is the most violent region of the world. And Jamaica, for a number of years now, has been the country in the world with the highest murder rate. 2021, I put up this slide here. Five countries in the Caribbean um, maybe we need to say the English speaking Caribbean that had the highest murder rates for Jamaica, followed by St. Lucia. Followed by Belize and Dominica is in fourth place and Guyana is in fifth place. Just a little bit of Dominica. In terms of murders, 200,000 people. So we should understand that and take appropriate measures on the advice of professionals in this business, which, which I have not, as to what we in Dominica can do diminish the number of murders we are having so that it drops back to the level we had in uh, 2000 which was uh, I think two and then the next year there, were, there was only one yeah, rather than having 19 and, uh, and rising you know? okay so in the Caribbean dominant is this um, English speaking, in English speaking Caribbean. Yeah. What about the place in the world? Yeah. Internationally. Was, oh, yeah. what, 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 where do we fit? Ah, uh, I mean, this is this is in 2021. Yeah, that's, 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 um, in, in 20, 20, 20, 20, 2022, there's uh, another, another, uh, so Jamaica again is at the top of the list with 52.90 murders per 
Burdens, 200,000 population, followed by Venezuela at 40.40. Trinidad and Tobago is in third place at 39.40, only one point lower than Venezuela. Um, Dominica does not figure on this 2022 list. Yeah, you're talking about the Caribbean there still? No, or is no, this Latin, the Latin, Latin America? Latin America and okay. the Caribbean. And the Caribbean. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the, the country with the lowest Burda rate was Chile with 4.60, which is below the world average. Yeah. Um, but there's something uh, 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 maybe that's been puzzling me for a bit there. Maybe some of our viewers might be able to uh, enlighten me or enlighten us on it there. That the United States, we think of it as a, a violent country, but as we just indicated there, it has a murder rate about six per hundred thousand is lower than we have most years. But at the same time, the United States has a self-murder rate or suicide rate, as it's sometimes called, but three times as high as the murder rate. Which I find very positive. And if there's somebody from the United States who has who to live there or whatever, we would be very happy to to know from you what could be the cause of this odd behavior that so many people are resorting to suicide. How does so, the, the, the rate in the United States compare to the rest of the world, other parts of the world? Uh, but I, I know, I didn't look at the, the, word, the suicide rate for the rest of the world, no, but um, you can look it up uh, and compare it on the internet. Because that would give us some context then. Eh? Yeah. yeah like whether yeah, it is yeah. a widespread thing right. or whether it is specific I, to the I, United I, States. I, I doubt that many mm -hmm. countries where the number of suicides right. exceed the number of murders. Yeah. But they might be. Yeah. All right. Um, well, Matt, I think yeah. we've come to the end of the line for this one. Okay. Well, thank yes. you for providing the information. As I told you at the beginning of this um, program, um, viewers, that um, Mac is a co-host, but from time to time, he will be the main um, contributor in terms of information to the topic at hand. And tonight, that's how we started off his role as a resource person. As we progress with this program, we aim to bring resource people whenever necessary, when we're discussing topics where we feel that there are people who are in a position to contribute meaningfully, significantly yeah. to the discussion. We will bring them on board. And we also encourage you to give us feedback and to indicate some of the of the topics that you would like us to, to tackle on your behalf. But always remember that the focus of this show is to bring you the facts and figures. So we will be tackling topics that will enable us to do the necessary research and bring you the appropriate statistics. So remember that when you're making suggestions to us. No, you know, by the no, I, I just think um, probably we should have another session on this topic of violence and crime in Dominica. And this time I have somebody else who is, has a different perspective from us or as a guest. You know, um, I have somebody in mind. Uh, I will we'll confirm that later as soon as we Meet the arrangements for the person to be um, with us. Yeah. Okay, so we may have someone else on this, uh, yeah, I'm sure, talking about the, the crime rate and crime generally in, in Dominica. Uh, and we're looking forward to being able to bring that to you. But in the meantime, we thank you for joining us and uh, we'll see you again next time.